concussion coming off that thing standing right here. Parmesite spark core. Are you kidding? Come here, kitty. Hey. Hey, what's up? This is so much better than the first generation stuff I've had. It, uh, it's right there with most Gen 2 devices, no doubt about it. It's pretty cool. Can't see that at all with a naked eye. I turned the illuminator on. While I'm in here, it was so dark in here that without the illuminator, it's uh, a little hard to see, at least through the camera. If I put it right up to my eye, it's a lot better. It's a great little monocular that's very versatile and truly does compete with Generation 2 technology at a much lower price point. If night vision is something that you've thought about but cost is prohibitive, this may be your gateway. This is how it comes to you here. OD green, molly pouch. Uh, nothing special. It's got a little oversized main compartment here. It's going to fit in your spark with uh, maybe an extra accessory or two and in the front you can keep a couple batteries. The spark is resistant to shock and is waterproof. Polymer housing, it's a real nice construction. I feel like you could drop it off the top of the roof and you'd be just fine. Uh, the lenses, they seem like they're nice and clear. The glass is very good for for what it is. I mean it's technically not even a Gen 2 although uh, I would say it performs about as well as a Gen 2 device. Probably better than some, even. It is pitch black. I can't see anything. Naked eye, I can't see anything out here. And I've been outside for at least half an hour. Check this out. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of a little wooded area next to the house here on a pathway going through the forest as we call it and you can see nothing with the naked eye inside of here but as you can see it's hard to get my camera to focus through here it looks much clearer in person it's not very heavy at all it comes in at only about 14 ounces so it's a uh, it's actually quite light for night vision when it comes to controls it's pretty simple you have a focus for both lenses and then you have your power switch right here you can turn it on without the IR or the infrared illumination now after you turn it off there's some residual power there that continues to light up the surroundings for another minute or so now if you're in a brightly lit room like this um, you're going to want to make sure you keep this cap on it has a little pin hole there so as you can see if you turn it on you can uh, still see through that little pinhole but you don't want to expose this lens to any bright lights at all you'll damage the internals the uh, lens cap right here easily folds to either side although you're going to want to keep it to this side so you're not getting in front of your illuminator um, it stays attached all the time so you're not going to lose it. The battery cap is also connected. Around the lens here you've got this oversized eye cup. It really helps to get rid of any extraneous light and makes it easy to focus on what you're viewing through the lens. As you're looking through the device your field of view is rated for 30 degrees so uh, while it does limit your vision somewhat it's not bad for a monocular. The rails on the sides are proprietary, they're not Picatinny or Weaver, they do sell additional attachments so you can adapt them to those, uh, but out of the box it won't be compatible. It gives you a lot of mounting options, you can attach it to a lot of different devices, whether it be a helmet or a weapon, etc. Also on the front right here, as you can see, it has a little LED illuminator that is infrared. It easily illuminates things out to 25-30 yards. Um, that being said, this does a great job on its own. Outside there in the backyard, it was very, very dark. Um, there was a little bit of residual light from the neighbors, but very minimal, and a little from the moon. But even without the illuminator, 
I could easily see out to the other properties, probably a, a solid 100 yards plus. So it, it does a great job on its own. You might not even need an illuminator depending on the night. And that's a great advantage because, as you know, if you've ever used night vision, these uh, little infrared LEDs do give off uh, a red hue. So if you look at it in person uh, with the lights dark, you can see that infrared light. Let me make this a little darker here. Uh, now with the naked eye, it is visible and it is red. It, for some reason it shows up blue, blue, purple through the camera. Uh, but in person, it's uh, a red infrared. So yeah, in a practical situation against humans, you don't want to be using that infrared. Uh, for one, it can possibly be seen with naked eye, especially if it's real dark out. But also, <laughs> if they have night vision themselves, you're going to be lighting yourself up like a Christmas tree. Now the battery is easily swapped right next to the IR right there. It uses one CR123 battery. I'd prefer AA, but I guess it saves a little bit of space, and it's not too hard to find CR123s anymore. The single CR123 battery is rated to run for 40 hours. I'm not sure if that's with IR or not, uh, but I know I've put in a good chunk of hours, at least over 20, and it's still running strong, and that's with IR running most of the time. When it comes to the actual resolution of the Spark, it's pretty impressive. At 60 to 70 line per millimeter resolution, it's right on par with some Gen 3 devices. When it comes to Gen 1 devices, it really is in another league. In fact, all new models of the Spark are supposed to come in at 70 LPMM. That truly is impressive as most Gen 3 technology is coming in at about 57 LPMM and Gen 2 units are dropping down to about 45. So uh, the Spark, as far as resolution is concerned, truly is in the upper echelon of night vision. You might wonder if the resolution is so high, why is it still a Gen 1 device? Really the only reason is it doesn't have a microchannel plate. Besides that, it's definitely a superior technology to Gen 1 devices. Generally with Gen 1 you're going to have a glass tube inside. What they've done with the Spark is they've created what they call the ceramic optical ruggedized engine. <laughs> so that's what the core is. What we're talking about is the Spark uses a ceramic compound that they fuse with metal alloys. It's very similar to what you're going to see inside of a Gen 2 or a Gen 3 device. So really it has as much in common with Gen 2 and Gen 3 as it does Gen 1. Yeah, I was doing some projects on the, <laughs> on the desk there just now. The last night vision device that I had was actually a four power and uh, it was real difficult to get around in tight quarters if you were indoors or trying to hike looking down around by your feet. It was real hard to gauge with that depth perception where you were at. The spark on the other hand is a one power so it's a lot easier to look through it while you're walking and not get disoriented. It's kind of awkward walking with the, the camera hooked up to it here. I'm just holding the camera to the night vision. So my depth perception is a little off looking through the viewfinder on the camera. So if you plan on using it for any kind of hiking or leisurely activities, uh, the One Power really is the best option. The magnification can be really nice for situations where you need a range out, such as hunting. If you really need magnification, it's easy to hook it up to a scope and use the scope's magnification. So uh, in my opinion, the, uh, the powered optics on the night vision isn't really a necessity. In addition, with the no magnification, it's easy to use it with a red dot or a holographic such as an Aimpoint or an EOTech. I've tried it on both and it actually worked really well. So whether you have a scope or a non-powered optic, you really can't go wrong. When it comes down to it, the Spark is a compact, lightweight, very rugged, waterproof, high resolution, adaptable, and extremely affordable monocular. At this point, the Spark doesn't have a lot of peers in its price range. As you can see, I'm being stalked by a wild beast out here.